Hi, I'm George Alger with the Two Green Energy Video Report, and I am speaking with Craig Shields. Craig is the editor of Two Green Energy itself, and he is also the author of Renewable Energy Facts and Fantasies, a number one best-selling energy book on Amazon. Welcome, Craig. Thanks for having me, George. All right, so today we're going to speak about the hydrogen economy, and what does that mean? Well. In, I believe it was 1970, one of the consultants to the Nixon administration coined this term. So we're just talking 40 plus years ago. Uh, in an effort to explain a transition that he thought was important from uh, the hydro hydrocarbon economy. In other words, the fact that when we stop producing energy for the world, the world stops. Now where is that energy coming from? Well, hydrocarbon, so oil coal, um, natural gas. Um, what, um, what he saw was the necessity to get away from that for reasons that became obvious actually just a couple years later. You had the oil embargoes of the early 70s. You have, you know, now we've got peak oil, you know, here it is four decades later, and all manner of, of horrors in between. Uh, wars fought all over the world. Uh, huge amounts of social chaos and you know externalities like global warming and you know ocean acidification and so forth. So this was a this was the statement that the hydrocarbon economy need to be replaced with a hydrogen economy, which simply means that if you have pure hydrogen, which doesn't uh, uh, occur naturally in any real abundance on this planet, but to the degree to which you have pure hydrogen. Um, you can recombine it with atmospheric oxygen to create a lot of energy. So this is what a hydrogen fuel cell is. So he postulated a day in which this, this set of hydrocarbons would be replaced with hydrogen as the central form of energy, of an of a energy carrier as it's called. Um, thus uh, replacing all this dirtiness um, with and, and kind of ecological and human health hazard with something clean. So how far would you say we've evolved towards this ideal of a hydrogen economy in the last 40 years? Well, first of all, I'm not sure it is an ideal. It certainly, it made sense at the time. And I think that it was a, uh, w when it was originally conceived, it was a sincere attempt. In fact, it was a visionary concept. Um, the idea that we needed for m any of a dozen reasons to get off of fossil fuels. Um, it, it, coincidentally, it was right about the time that global warming was discovered. The, one of the interviews that I have in my book with uh, Professor uh, Ramanathan of Scripps Oceanography Institute, um, he was the, he's cr generally credited as the discovery of global warming. In 1972, he correctly predicted that there'd be a measurable increase in the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere by 1980. So it was right around this time. Now, is hydrogen the way to go with this thing? I think the answer for various reasons is no. Um, in other words, the, the concept that we need a liquid fuel to replace gasoline in our cars may have made sense in 1970. Um, and certainly there's still people trying to develop fuel cell based vehicles and hydrogen fueling infrastructures, but it's an enormous, I mean, just think of the task on this thing. We have a land mass that's three and a half million square miles. Um, we have, uh, think of the number of gasoline stations and think of the, we have 230 million uh, cars, uh, you know, that drink gasoline and oil and diesel on the roads, retrofitting these with, for hydrogen um, is just an enormous undertaking. Not that electric transportation, battery powered cars as an example, isn't, doesn't require some infrastructure, but we've got, we have electricity. You can unplug your toaster and plug in your car. You simply can't do that with hydrogen. All right, so is there a future? Well, by my wits, it's funny, I was on a radio program this morning where the guy said, I'm really interested in this geothermal thing. What's, um, you know, aren't we going to get to the point where we can do what they do with oil exploration, and that is use, you know, high-tech electronics to figure out what's down there. Before we drill, can't we have some notion of what's there? And I said, to be honest with you, the answer is no right now. And he goes, well, won't we get there? And I go, well, I can't say that we won't get there. But what I can say is that while we're trying to get there, 
everything else is changing too. So all the maturation of different technologies, even the more mature technologies now, the wind and photovoltaics are getting better all the time. They're getting more efficient. Um, and nascent technologies like concentrating solar power are getting better a lot faster than the mature technologies. So the answer isn't, um, could we get to the position where hydrogen, where this would be a good thing? It's already a good thing. The question is, aren't there, are there other better things? And I think the answer is obviously yes. When I, look, when I go to uh, a, an auto show and see where we're going, not so much at the auto show, but reading kind of behind the scenes in terms of where we're going with respect to electric transportation. Um, on Wednesday, I'll be going to an advanced uh, battery consortium. Where we're going with respect to the energy density and power density of these batteries and the cost coming down um, in terms of all of this technology, it's pretty impressive. I think, I think hydrogen, whether it was a sincere um, people wanted this, believed sincerely that this was important, or they just were simply trying to derail the path, a more direct path toward electric transportation generally. Um, I just think the world is going to sidestep this. It's going to be one of the many things that could have had a place except that type of thing. Okay. So then is there, is there any more resources that are still being funneled into this, or is it really uh, kind of quietly going away? You know, I don't know the degree to which it's quietly going away. You had George Bush famously getting into a car, you know, while the, the, while the Bush administration was rubber stamping 74,000 oil leases on Bureau of Land Management on public land um, in the uh, early part of this century. George Bush famously got into a car and drove it into a hydrogen filling station. He goes, this is where it's at. This is, this is the future. Now, was that uh, disingenuous? You know, personally, I think so. Um, are there sincere people actually trying to get this done? American Honda certainly uh, appeals to me. I mean, the, the uh, interview in my book with Steve Ellis from Honda, that guy is as sincere as the day is long, and he believes this with every fiber of his being. So I just, I'm just not betting on it is all I'm saying. Okay. So in terms of the opportunity, it exists but it may not be better than other opportunities of renewable energy. That's precisely what I would say. And especially in terms of electric transportation being the obvious example, we need portable energy. We can't have, uh, we, in other words, we can't have uh, to heat our buildings and so forth and so on. We can have uh, a grid into which all these things are plugged. To move our bodies and our cargo around, we can't do that. So we do need portable sources of stored energy. And hydrogen is one, but I'm betting that, that that's not going to win the day, especially because of the fueling infrastructure, the trillions of dollars that it would cost to, to um, replace or augment gasoline with hydrogen. Good. All right. Thank you, Craig. Okay. No problem. George Alger here with Two Green Energy for the Two Green Energy Video Report. Thank you.